is good to be with you again. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said. So said the angel to the women when they visited the tomb where Jesus had been laid, and they found it empty on that first Easter morning. I hope you all had a blessed Easter. Rather low-key again this year, wasn't it? But nevertheless, it was right that we should remember Jesus' death and celebrate his resurrection, both forming the backbone of our faith. Forty days after his resurrection, Jesus ascended into heaven and our first hymn reminds us of these momentous events. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your promise in Scripture that you will never leave us or forsake us. And thank you that you are present with us now. We praise and thank you that you are faithful and keep all your promises. We praise you for your continuing love and care and provision for us and for all your many blessings and especially for sending the Lord Jesus to be our Saviour and the Holy Spirit to be our teacher and guide. 
Please help us to be a blessing to others by being patient, kind and thoughtful. We ask you to strengthen and enable those who look after us. We do thank you for their care and kindness. And we also ask you to equip those who rule over us so that they may act wisely and make informed decisions concerning our governance. We ask our prayers in and through the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's conclude our prayer time together with the doxology. resurrection, Jesus appeared not only to his disciples but to others as well. That very day, resurrection day, he appeared to some of the women and to Mary Madeline, also to the two on the way to Emmaus, just down the road from Jerusalem. They told Jesus what had been happening in Jerusalem, he didn't seem to know. They told him about the crucifixion, the resurrection, but they didn't recognise him. He explained that the Christ had to suffer these things in accordance with the scriptures. It was all recorded there, he said. They reached Emmaus and invited Jesus to stay. And then when he took the bread, blessed and broke it, the penny dropped, they realised it was him. Then he was gone and they rushed back to Jerusalem to tell the others. And suddenly there he was in the upper room with them, the disciples and the others who were gathered there. And again, he opened up the scriptures to them and explained it had all been foretold that the Christ had to die and three days later would be raised to life. During the next 40 days, Jesus met with the disciples and others several times and continued to teach them about the kingdom of God. Some of the disciples went fishing one night on Lake Galilee, but they caught nothing. Jesus had a barbecue going on the shore and called out to them at dawn to see if they had any fish. Although they didn't realise it was him. Nothing, they replied. Cast your net on the right side, he said. They did and caught 153 large fish on that occasion. 
hauled them in with difficulty and then joined Jesus for breakfast. By now they all knew who it was. It was the Lord. He continued visiting them and teaching them until, well, Luke takes up the story in the book of Acts, chapter 1, starting at verse 6, when the apostles were gathered together. And this is what Luke wrote. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taking up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. And so Jesus ascended into heaven and Ascension Day this year will be celebrated on Thursday the 13th of May. When I was at junior school, we would all march down to the local church in the morning of Ascension Day for a service and have the afternoon off. Oh, we all loved Ascension Day, but for quite the wrong reason. I've dug out an old Ascension Day hymn for you. Hail the day that sees him rise. Alleluia. Oh, oh, oh. 
those poor disciples mustn't have known whether they were coming or going. They'd lived and travelled around the country with Jesus for three years. It was a bit like being in a special bubble with him. We're used to bubbles, aren't we? We've been living in them on and off for over a year now. A bubble with one other person or a household with whom we closely relate or simply with the people we live with. The disciples were in something like a bubble with Jesus and then he'd been arrested, brutally crucified and buried in a stone tomb. On the Sunday morning, they discovered he'd risen from the dead. They'd seen him, talked with him, been taught by him, seen his hands and his feet where the nails had been hammered in. He'd explained that what had happened to them was what he'd tried to tell them about and warn them about before that fateful Friday. He'd shown them from the scriptures that it had all been planned. It had been planned by God from the very beginning for our salvation. So our sins could be forgiven if we confess them to God. They touched him, eaten with him. He really was flesh and blood. He'd even miraculously provided fish for them when they'd worked all night and caught nothing. He'd done that before, of course, in those earlier days. He cooked breakfast for them on the seashore of Galilee and they ate together. They were quite getting used to him being back with them again, truly alive, and they realised he really was the Son of God, the Christ, the Messiah. It was like being back in that bubble again. And now he was gone again, taken up into heaven and hidden by a cloud. They were alone once more. But we know he didn't abandon them and leave them alone because 10 days later, he sent the Holy Spirit, the Comforter to them, just as he had promised at that last meal that he had eaten with them before he died. He'd said to them then, if you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. And again he'd said, I will not leave you as orphans. And he didn't, because 10 days after he ascended to heaven, the gift of the Holy Spirit was given. From then on, the disciples were changed men and they went out into the world to tell everybody about Jesus and forgiveness through him. The same Holy Spirit is there for each Christian today to comfort, guide, teach and lead us into all truth. He is always with us until one day we'll actually meet Jesus face to face and be with him forever. But that part of the story is for another day. Let's end our service today with a hymn of thanksgiving and praise to our God for the wonderful things he has done. Verse two is a prayer asking for his constant presence, peace and guidance, which can be ours if we ask his forgiveness and give our lives 
to him. Now thank we all our God. join me again to say goodbye but before we go I just remind you of Jesus words before his ascension behold I am with you always to the end of the age let us bless one another as we say the grace May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. It's been lovely to be with you all again and to share this time with you. Did you notice my flowers again this week? My baby bought them for me. He's 49 now, just had his jab. But his young daughter popped them in the other day. She's just 11. And the smell pervades the whole house. But you have to be very careful you don't get the pollen on you. Otherwise it stains. But they are rather gorgeous. Anyway, it's been lovely to be with you. And we look forward to being with you again soon. Bye for now. Bye.